How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to be taking you guys through my team selection for the upcoming Game Week 23. So it's a little bit unfortunate that we have not had news about the potential double Game Week 23, but nevertheless, I'm going to be going over every single scenario, talking about those double Game Week transfers, as well as talking about those single Game Week transfers, if push comes to shove and we don't get any news before the deadline. As with any team selection video though, we're first going to talk about my game week at 22 performance, which was actually double game week, and hopefully it was as good of a game week for you as it was for myself. We're then going to move on to the actual game week 23 team, just to give you guys some context about what players that we currently have and what players we could potentially bring in, we discussed after that in the transfer plan. So that's something you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So going over our game week, a double game week 22 team review, and fortunately for us, it was an absolutely massive game week. We basically halved our rank and are currently sitting just within the top 10k at 9.8k. So really happy with that boost. I was super happy with this game week. I feel like finally our luck is kind of turning after that game week nine. Mo Salah not captaining him, going for Kai Havertz. I think Bruno Fernandes has repaid that. So luckily I can leave that decision behind me now that I kind of feel that we finally got some luck. So the two chances that we actually brought in this week were going to be Bruno Fernandes and then also Dennis. We brought those players in for Salah and then also Broya from Southampton. So luckily Salah obviously being at AFCON and then also Broya managing to start I think in that Southampton game but did not get any return. So kind of net points gained, absolutely massive there, especially because we did captain Bruno Fernandes. So I will be touching on Bruno Fernandes and the reason why we actually brought him in a little bit later on. But firstly, let's go over the bench, even though it might be slightly boring. So the big surprise about the Watford uh, kind of team selection was that actually Ben Foster was selected for their first game on the weekend, or even though he just came back from injury. We mentioned this possible scenario in the deadline stream when you guys asked whether you would start someone like a Ramsdale. A uh, Ramsdale's probably a bad example here. Let's go for another goalkeeper, maybe as uh, someone that actually features someone like the Wolves goalkeeper saw, or would you play Ben Foster? And I said to you, you might as well just play Ben Foster because he might actually start both of them unless your single game week player actually has a great fixture. So what goes and happens, Ben Foster actually plays the first game, but then Watford get that postponement because of Burnley, Burnley postponing yet another game in game week at 22. So unfortunately that didn't go ahead, but I think it was a little bit expected that that Burnley game was going to be called off. We then move on to Human Son who didn't feature in the Leicester game yesterday. However, that game did go ahead. The North London derby against Arsenal was postponed, but we did get news about that before the deadline. So no excuses on that one. Ben White, uh, that North London derby yet again being postponed. And that's why I was really confident with taking a minus for it because I did think on my bench, there wasn't too many options that I could rely on if they needed to come on. And then finally, Douglas Deweese, Aston Villa looking quite strong. However, Douglas Deweese definitely showing why he's 4.5 million, not really getting any returns in the prior game weeks. He does play, but he doesn't really get that many attacking returns, however. So now that the bench has been cleared out, we can finally talk about the starting 11 where all the magic happened. In defense, there was actually some magic. We got some double points, a returners, but starting off with David De Gea in goal there with a massive eight points. I say massive, but it could actually have been a really big score from David De Gea. He could have actually kept clean sheets in both of those games. The Aston Villa game, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt just because Aston Villa had so many chances. And you can see that because of the amount of save points that David De Gea actually got against Brentford, also racked up a healthy amount of safe points but imagine if he actually kept a clean sheet would have had maximum bonus points probably and also save points added there with clean sheets massive haul there we actually spoke about captaining him in the team selection video last week but i just thought uh, the main reason i don't want to go for him is that i didn't trust that united defense and we actually have been proven true on that front because they lost their clean sheets quite avoidably in both of those games so it might be a little bit unlucky if you guys did captain david de Gea, but i mean he did outscore ronaldo by quite a high margin so you should be quite happy with that and then going on to our four at the back, we've got some uh, very bad performance here. Sufal only getting one point after kind of getting demolished by Leeds. 3-2 the end score uh, to Leeds in that West Ham game. Don't you really know what happened with West Ham? Although they haven't been the most strong kind of defensive side, I wasn't expecting them to concede three goals to Leeds. And that's why I was actually quite confident playing Sufal because the defensive return might have come, but also maybe an attacking return. I guess the same could be said about Marcus Alonso playing a Man City and then Brighton. Against Man City, not too much to expect there. Uh, got a yellow card quite early on into that fixture. I was just hoping that he wasn't sent off. Didn't get sent off, but did concede, resulting in only one point. Then what goes and happens, he plays Brighton. They concede against Brighton, and he also picks up a yellow card. Now that Brighton game was a little bit nervy because he was playing against Lamptey on that side and Lamptey was destroying everyone in that Chelsea side. Unfortunately, the finishing product just wasn't there for Lamptey and that's why luckily Alonso only conceded one goal. 
But I guess we can just say that Marcus Alonso had a single game week in game week 22, and that's why he only racked up the two appearance points. But luckily our next two options, more unluckily that they were probably the template picks that most people have, but it's Trent Alexander-Arnold and then it's also Jao Cancelo. So both of these two racking up a double digit return, Cancelo is edging Trent by one point, I think he got uh, one more bonus point on that front, but it's really telling how these two are the best value defenders, if not best value players in the game at the current moment, and if you guys don't have them, I don't really know what to say to you. So at least Man City and Liverpool redeemed our defensive department and added to De Gea's points, quite a healthy return from our defenders. But now going on to our midfield apartment and it was kind of a little bit hit or miss here. We have Jota that could have actually got some more returns but unfortunately only the three points against Brentford. Now it seems like Liverpool only started scoring after Jota went off. Maybe the game spread out a little bit more but three points. At least he did get the clean sheet point finally. Jared Bowen with seven points but yet another one what could have actually been in the final minutes of that fixture against Leeds. Antonio crosses the ball in, was deflected but Antonio still would have got the assist. And Bowen kind of does this weird thing where he chests it instead of headering it and it goes over the crossbar. So what could have been in game week at 22 if Antonio got that assist and Bowen got that goal. But I mean, it's one of those things. Bowen's a return us quite healthily, especially the last game week when it captain him. So I guess we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. But finally, going on to our star of the game week, a double game week 22, and it's going to be Bruno Fernandes. The F changed to an L there. I was really happy that I brought him in and captain him, but I'm pretty sure there might have been those of you that went for Ronaldo. And what I will say is 100%, I thought Ronaldo was the best option to go for, but that was purely based on the United manager's words in his press conference prior to that game week at 22 deadline. So if you guys don't know what happened, we actually got news that Ronaldo missed half of the training in the prior day, but the United manager came out and said that that could have actually been the plan and he has been recovering at home from a little bit of an injury that he has had. But he did go on to state that Ronaldo should be fine or is expecting him to be fit for that Aston Villa game. So what happens? Ronaldo's not even in the squad and doesn't even travel with that United team. So if you're going to blame anyone in this game week, you can blame the United manager. But if I told you to captain Ronaldo, I will accept that to blame. As long as it will allow you to enjoy FPL more, I don't really mind being blamed for all the FPL decisions that don't really go your guys' way. But now going to Bruno Fernandes, and if you guys did watch the deadline stream, you would have known in the final 10 minutes, people were pressuring me to make moves. That's 100% fine because I do agree with it because the FPL site might actually crash, but I honestly did not know what to do. It was between bringing Ronaldo in for a minus eight or Bruno Fernandes for a minus four. And what it came down to is that I really did want a Watford striker. And so that's why I ended up bringing in Dennis or Josh King. But then I also wanted to bring Salah in or at least have a route that's easy to bring Salah in for the next game week. And that was going to be Bruno Fernandes. Because what I could do is I could just downgrade Son in this game week. And then that will give me enough funds to upgrade Bruno Fernandes. And that's why they'd go for the minus four over the minus eight. But yes, it was simply pure luck that Bruno Fernandes managed to return so well. I mentioned this over on Twitter. If you guys did watch that mid-season review, Bruno Fernandes before this game week was the single worst value per minute played midfielder in the FPL game. That sample was taken of players scoring more than 40 points. So just take that into account. But that is basically every midfielder that is nailed. So just showing you there how FPL can be pure luck at some times. And especially this season, I do think the luck factor has increased. But some decisions go your way, some decisions don't. We saw that in game week 9 when Havertz uh, didn't score any returns in a 7-0 win against Norwich. But Salah goes and bangs a Hattie against United. So these decisions sometimes go your way and sometimes go against you. But as I said, if you guys did captain Rotto, it is quite unlucky that the manager came out and said that he should be fit. And then he didn't even end up traveling. But two goals and maximum bonus points against Aston Villa. And then you also have last night where he got two assists, relatively unselfish for the Greenwood goal. But then in the final minute of that fixture, he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he decides to do a chip and it ended up being quite a pathetic attempt. So unfortunately that took Bruno Fernandes down from three bonus points to only one. And just imagine if he did score that goal, how many points he would have gotten and how the rank would have actually looked. So that's what I'm saying to you. See that in some scenarios, we do have the luck, but in some scenarios, we don't. And just imagine if all the players in my team actually ended up scoring their attempts, how good our rank would have been. But now that we've gone over, Bruno Fernandes kind of discussed the rationale behind that. Yes, it was luck, but I guess we did bring him in at the end of the day and captain him. But now moving on to our forward department where the luck was definitely not in our favor. So firstly, we do have Dennis. We brought him in for Breuer from Southampton. They ended up kind of equaling each other out with only two points. But I was expecting or at least hoping that maybe Watford did have that Burnley game in the midweek. Now, I did state earlier on with Ben Foster that there was an expectation that that game would be postponed. And the reason for that is that their Saturday fixture was postponed and this fixture was happening three days after and theoretically they wouldn't have enough players for that midweek fixture but I still didn't want to bring Dennis in I thought Newcastle was a perfectly good game to go for and that game ended 1-1 if memory serves me right with Dennis and Josh King both blanking 
So it is what it is on that fixture, but at least we do have Dennis for the upcoming game week against Norwich, where hopefully he can bounce back and get back to the scoring side of things. DCL though is definitely not getting back to the scoring side of things. Another blank. I have Everton against Norwich. Wouldn't have expected it, but what do Everton go and do? They lose 2-1 to Norwich, a side that's super terrible and basically at the bottom of the Prem. That result was the end of Rafa Benitez and maybe DCL can have a new manager bounce or something like that. I just don't really have much faith with Everton and I'm pretty sure if you guys support Everton, you probably agree with me on that front. And then finally, Antonio getting an assist, but also picking up a yellow card. So that's why he only has four points at the end of the day. But he did almost assist that Bowen goal at the end, which I think would have added a few more bonus points as well. So overall, super lucky game week, but it could have been absolutely massive. And I'm sure you guys can agree with me that it was luck for the Bruno captain, but we did bring him in. And I mean, we are creating our own luck at the end of the day. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys did. I know there was a couple of you in the deadline stream that went with the Bruno captain. Did you manage to stick with it or did you bring in Ronaldo and captain him as well? And now moving on to our game week 23 side of things. So looking forward to the game week ahead. Please remember that it is going to be a Friday night deadline. So hopefully I do see you guys in the deadline stream. And that should be kind of your reminder of the deadline approaching because I always do stream one hour before the deadline. But we did speak about this in the Ultimate Guide yesterday. So I'm just going to go over it quickly if you guys aren't up to date with the kind of potential double game week of 23 fixtures. So first of all, the fixtures could be a double for three teams. The first one is more of a nailed. If it's going to be a double game week, Aston Villa will double. And they'll have Everton and Burnley at home or Leeds away. So it's either going to be Burnley or Leeds that are doubling with them. There could always be some other teams. But right now, Ben Krillin is predicting that these three teams have the best chance of doubling. So I'm going to say that again. It's going to be Aston Villa and one more team. So that other team could either be Burnley or Leeds. I'm really sure most of us are hoping that it is going to be Leeds because I really want an excuse to bring the Brazilian Rafinha into my team. And if Leeds do double, they'll have a game against Newcastle at home, then also Aston Villa at home. Now, if Burnley do double, which I guess is a little bit less likely now that the fact that they have so many postponements and also they might not be actually back in training with enough players. But if they do double, they'll have Arsenal away and then Aston Villa away. So just keep in mind that these fixtures might be announced as you guys are watching this video, but I will confirm it in the deadline stream coming up tomorrow. But now going on to our Game Week 23 team selection, as stated in the introduction, I first want to go over the team just to give you guys some context before we do talk about the transfers. So starting off with the bench, and luckily the bench this week is not that boring, we're going to start off with David De Gea against West Ham at home on my bench. So yes, you did read that right. I actually have Ben Fast against Norwich in my starting 11. I just think because I have Bowen and Antonio, I want to put all my eggs in one basket and hope that West Ham do score and therefore I'm not going to be affected by the David De Gea clean sheet loss. I think you guys can agree with me right now that West Ham, even though they did lose against Leeds, are actually playing some good football and United at the moment aren't looking that great and therefore I do favor United to actually concede. Going on to the rest of the bench, I've got Son against Chelsea that probably still going to be injured, but even if he was back to full fitness, don't think I would exactly be playing him, even though Spurs actually look quite good against Leicester. So far against United, I think both of these teams do score, do own a Bruno Fernandes, so I'm hoping that he gets some returns. So that's why Sufal is on my bench, then obviously Douglas Luiz against Everton. However, if Douglas Luiz does get a double game week, I'm pretty sure I'll play him, even though he is only 4.5 million. But now going to the starting 11, and as I mentioned, Ben Foster against Norwich. Now, I don't have much faith in the Watford defense and Ben Foster in general, but I do actually think that they have a higher chance of keeping a clean sheet than United do. Now, I guess you could have the argument that David De Gea will probably get some more save points, but I just think I might still go at this and just hope that they do keep a clean sheet against Norwich. The rest of the defense kind of picks itself. Burnley traveling to the Emirates. Ben White has a relatively good game week. Arsenal have not played much football, but they will be playing tonight against Liverpool. So hopefully Ben White comes out of that game injury free. But they do have a great fixture in game week 23. And that's why I'm comfortable still playing him and kind of thinking back to that Arsenal defensive form that they have had a couple of game weeks ago. Cancelo and Trent aren't going anywhere. The most nil defenders in the game. The most valuable probably players to have. I think Cancelo has a great chance of some attacking returns as well as Trent against two sides that have been struggling a little bit defensively. I do think though that Man City have the better fixture and I think they're the better team overall defensively as with Crystal Palace against Liverpool, kind of a bogey team and I'm just imagining Gallagher putting in an absolute rocket from outside the box. And our final defender to go for is Marcus Alonso against the Spurs side that as I mentioned with Son have improved and against Leicester they looked absolutely sensational. So I really don't have much faith for this kind of Chelsea clean sheet and I just hope that Alonso doesn't get booked or sent off. Our midfoot apartment looks slightly better. We do have two options playing against each other. Bowen against Fernandez. Fernandez looks to be in better form at the current moment. I think this new position that he has been taking up looks relatively better for his form. And I think he looks to be enjoying his football slightly more than he has over these past couple game weeks. 
Bowen, another player in sensational form, and I do think it's United. I am favoring him to actually get on the score sheet. Isn't away game, so that's slightly annoying, but I do think West Ham have been playing some good football, and therefore I think they could at least get some goals against United. Diego Jot against Crystal Palace, actually a captaincy consideration. My vice captain at the current moment. I just don't really like the look of him or Liverpool in general without Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. It seems like they are concentrating on Diego Jota as he is the most senior attacker there and it seems like they're crowding him out a little bit and he is struggling to get forward. So that's kind of the only reason why he's not my captain. Otherwise, it probably would be locked in. And if this game might be at Anfield, I might have reconsidered my decision. But finally, on our front line, not too confident for the returns here. Antonio seems to be taking up a weird position, and I think he'll do it exactly the same as he has in the prior game weeks. On the counter-attack, he's almost the feeder. Think of it like a Harry Kane, doesn't have the pace. So what he does is he has the hold-up play, and then plays in a Bowen, a Lanzini, those sort of options in behind the defense. Now, this could lead to some points. I do think that West Ham will counter United, but I'm just hoping that Antonio can get some returns if I do keep hold of him. Calvert Lewin, though, against an Aston Villa side with Stevie G playing relatively well. I'm pretty sure there'll be some bad blood between Stevie G and Everton, so probably going to put on a good performance against the Blues. But I just think DCL's form at the current moment is terrible, and if we do make a transfer, I think the DCL will be quite high on that list. But then our final play in our starting 11 is going to be Dennis from Watford. Yes, currently our captain, but that might all change going into the deadline. I just really favor this game against Norwich. Another added fact is they do play the first game of game week 23. So a little bit of security there, knowing that we will get a fixture in a time that's been so unpredictable. So currently we do have the camps here on Dennis, but this could always change. I think a Fernandez could be a great option. Maybe someone like a Jota, or if we do get a double game week for Aston Villa or Leeds, I think they will comfortably take the armband. Let me know in the comments down below who are you bringing into your team, a double game week or a single game week, you can list kind of any options, and also who are you captaining leading up to that Friday deadline. But now finally, going on to our transfer plan, and I've put this in two different portions. The first portion is going to be if a game week 23 is a single game week, and therefore we'll probably be making one transfer, and that's Human Son out for Phil Foden. Now, obviously, I would like someone like a KDB, a Kevin De Bruyne, but I don't have enough funds for that. And I do want to downgrade Son so that I can afford Mo Salah if he does return to the Prem next week. If you guys did watch the Ultimate Guide yesterday, you'll know that uh, Man City have three great fixtures coming up. I think it's Southampton away, Brentford at home, and then Norwich away. So probably three of the best fixtures and that Man City side look absolutely ruthless at the moment. I just hope that Phil Foden manages to stay at that false nine position because when he does play there, he does get you points. So if it is a single game week, and this is probably the transfer that I prioritize the most, although I might also bank a transfer with preparation of Mo Salah coming in, hopefully in game week 24. But if we were to make a transfer for the double game week, I am kind of assuming here that it's going to be a double game week for Aston Villa and Leeds. However, if it's not going to be for Leeds and just Aston Villa, I could always bring in someone like a Buendia or a Coutinho. However, you guys do know my thoughts of Coutinho that I don't think you'll start both double game week fixtures. But if Leeds do get a double, 100% no-brainer. It's going to be Rafinha in, and I do think he's the standout captaincy option leading in to double game week at 23 because of that home fixture against Newcastle, then also having that home fixture against Aston Villa. So Son to Rafinha will be one of the most no-brainer transfers that we've had this season. And the other move that I'll probably will do is DCL out for Oli Watkins. Now between Ollie Watkins and Danny Ings, there's not too much kind of on paper with the stats. I just think that Ollie Watkins is slightly more nailed with Danny Ings struggling a bit with his fitness. So yes, if it is a double game week, I'll be taking yet another minus four hit, but I do think it's worth it, especially because we'll be bringing in Rafinha and Oli Watkins, who have some good fixtures in that double game week. But as I said in the comments down below, let me know what you guys are doing, what chances you're looking to potentially do. I really do hope that it's going to be a double game week. I just love double game weeks. And I do think if it is a double, it makes the move slightly a little bit more no-brainer, and that brings down the variance quite a bit. But that's basically wrap the video guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you new haven't subscribed yet. I'll be seeing you guys for the deadline stream as I mentioned on Friday evening one hour before the deadline. Hopefully I'll see you guys there as the support has been unreal over these past couple deadline streams. But I'm signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.